So we're going to start looking at linear equations in two variables. So far, though, we've looked at linear equations in one variable. And we've learned how to solve this, these equations for x or whatever our variable was. We solved them and got our single solution. I'm saying the single solution most of the time. There were times when we had infinitely many or no solutions. But let me look at a, an example here. A simple one where we're just solving for one single solution. So let's take 2x plus 4 is equal to 8 for example. Okay and of course the goal is to isolate x, right? We want x equal to some number. And we'll have 2x is equal to 8 minus 4 for example. Of course you can just subtract the 4 to the from the other side if you would like and you'll have this. And so we have to divide by 2 on both sides, right? Okay, or you can just say that this is 2, right? 4 divided by 2 will be 2. At any rate, so our solution is 2. If we were to graph this, we would graph it because it's one dimensional solution, right? On a single number line. And you could even put 2 at the center if you'd like. Right, there you go. Put a couple more on each side of it just for good measure. And whether you're using a closed circle, okay, in this case since it's a single number, we'll use a closed circle, okay. Um, when you're using closed and open circles, a closed in, filled in dot indicates uh, an included number, okay. Okay, and an open dot, or it looks like empty, would be an excluded when we did interval notation, remember that included, we used brackets, right, as well. Okay, and then for parentheses, we excluded, right? So to exclude, we used parentheses for intervals. Okay, just kind of wanted to remind you of that notation, okay? So, all right, so this is the graph of this single number solution, okay? And so, we could have done this in, let's call this example A. We could have example B, where we have, um, let's have negative 3x minus 1 is less than or equal to 0. And so we can solve this one and graph it. Right now we're getting into something that will have more than one solution, of course, because it's a real number interval solution. Let's take a look. So we'd have adding of 1 to both sides. We have what? Negative 3x is less than 1. Divide by 3, right? Your, excuse me, negative 3. Right in this step when we're dividing by a negative value. Okay, and let's do this. I'm going to go ahead and make a little note just to kind of review with you what's going on. This is going to end up being a very good little review. So a negative number is being divided, right, on both sides. This is when the change of sign happens. So again, I'm going to say because of the negative number that has been divided or multiplied on both sides of the inequality, notice that your sign direction, your inequality symbol has changed its direction. Okay, so long story short, the final solution of this is what? It's going to be x is greater than or equal to negative one-third. Okay, so look at this on a number line. Notice it's still a 1D, one-dimensional solution, even though it's more than one solution. We'll put negative one-third right in the center, use a bracket opening, and x is greater than means I'm shading to the right. Okay, and so basically that is it for this one. Of course, if you want to do interval notation, negative one-third through infinity would be this. And we do include the negative one-third with the bracket. Okay, so all these are one-dimensional. I can only do these on a number line as far as graphing is concerned because I'm only ha I only have one variable, right? One unknown item in my, my equations or inequalities. Okay, and so what we're going to start seeing in our next group of, uh, of problems is we're going to notice that we're going to have two variables, two unknown items in our 
in our um, problems, okay? You're going to see that there will be an x and a y included in these equations. We will see linear equations in two variables. Let's take a look. So here we're going to talk about solutions first to these linear equations in two variables. And what I have kind of up the top right are just some formats that we're going to learn about later on. And you're going to notice that you're going to start seeing these equations and they're going to have an X and a Y in them. Okay, and so these are the two variables that we're looking at. Before we just had X, now we're going to have X and a Y. But I want to like just kind of talk to you about outcomes. You know, we're looking for solutions. And so when you have a linear equation in two variables, you're going to, the solutions are going to consist of two values, okay? Of course, just like before, when we were able to check our solutions when we substituted back in, and that's what's on the right there in blue, when we substituted back in, we if you got a true statement, right, if your statement was true, then you, uh, you did find a good solution. So when you, that's this part here. Okay, and notice we got three equal to three here. We got a true statement. So that verified that this was a solution to the original equation. Okay, so we're going to start out kind of looking at that and kind of dealing with whether or not a point or a pair of, of values is an actual solution. You're going to hear these pairs. Okay, these pairs are going to be uh, called ordered pairs, coordinates, x, y coordinates. Um, we'll talk more about that right now, actually. So the two values we're looking at are x and y, right? We have, there's usually an x value, okay, whoops, okay, an x value and a y value, okay? The x, and, and when we give them, okay, we can talk about them as coordinates, okay? When we get into the graphing part of this, we'll talk more about them as coordinates, Okay, okay, and so um, we usually give them together as the solution, we write it as an ordered pair with the x value first and the y value second. Remember it, the way you can remember which one goes first is it's an alphabetical order, x comes before y. So just kind of remember keeping it in alphabetical order is a good rule of thumb. Okay, um, so that's what I have down here. So let's look at an example where we can verify something as a solution. Okay, so here I want to verify that each ordered pair is a solution of the given equation. Okay, so uh, here's my equation. I have my x and a y in here, okay? And remember that each point is given to me as an x-y pair, right? I'm going to write that right here in the top cor corner here in the right, just to remind you which one is x, which one is y. So for a, x is 1, and y is 7. So we want to go ahead and plug that in. So negative 3, open parentheses. You want to definitely start opening parentheses when you have, a, especially when you have a coefficient other than 1. For example, the y is just y, so I'm just going to put my 7 in for that. Okay. Let me kind of gray that out a little bit so you can see. Okay, and one goes here. So note that oh, note that that was x, right? And this was y. Okay, as in the original equation there. You can always refer to your equation to make sure you are, you know, writing it down correctly when you plug in. So you don't want to mess up any numbers or or um, you know, change anything that shouldn't be changed. Don't change the problem. Definitely a good rule of thumb there. Okay, so go ahead and do the math. Okay, we have what? Negative 3 plus 7 is equal to 4. Just clear clear up each side individually. Look at the left side. 7 minus 3 is 4. And bring down the right side. 4 is equal to 4. So this is true. So that means what? It is a solution. So that is verified. Okay. 
Okay, put a little check mark. Okay, so let's look at B, two zero. Okay. All right, so we want X and Y, right? X is two and Y is zero. Let's write our template. It's negative three, open a parenthesis, plus Y. We'll put something in there. You can put a parenthesis there too. X was X is two, Y is zero. Okay, and now just clear up the left side and see if it equals four. Negative six here, plus zero. You can see that this is going to be false. So this is false, right? Negative six is definitely not equal to four. So it's going to be not a solution. Okay, let's try C. Okay, so what I've done is set up C and D for you so that you can pause the video now and work out C and D. See if you get true or false statements. Are these a solution or are they not? Remember that we can have more than one solution. I know that in A, we said, yes, that's a solution. Well, that will not be the only solution. Believe it or not, these have infinitely many solutions most of the time. And we'll look at why in a bit. Okay, but go ahead and verify whether or not C and D are solutions or not. Go ahead and pause, and when you start the video again, when you press play, we'll have a solution. We'll have the answer for you. Okay, so here you can see that C, the ordered pair negative 2, 3, is not a solution because it is it produced a false statement. Okay, so you can see that 9 is not equal to 4. Right, false statements mean this is not a solution. Okay, and then in D, we see that 4 equal to 4 is true, right? We got a true statement that time. And so when we get a true statement, right, we know that, you know, when it shows that something is equal to itself, that means whatever you've plugged in there is a solution. Okay, and so this is just one way you can kind of look at a problem from this section, okay? This little group of problems. There's another way you could be asked to verify. And there's actually a couple different ways. And um, let me show you a couple of examples of how this same thing could be asked of you, okay? All right, so sometimes you're given a value of one of your variables, your x or your y, and you're asked to find the other variable to complete the solution, if you will. So here are the steps, okay? First, whatever value you're given, you're gonna plug that one into whatever your equation is, okay? Once it's plugged in, you're gonna solve for the remaining variable. It should be simple. It'll be like what you just finished covering, okay? So it turns it into an equation with one variable, like you're used to seeing. So let's check it out. Let's see what we got here in A. The equation we're given is y is equal to 2x minus 6, okay? So the first point, let's see, the first point we have to complete, they give us a 2, and the second coordinate is a question, okay? So the y is in question. We're given x, and we have to find the y. So let's find that one first, okay? So here's how it goes. We're going to write our y is equal to 2, open a parenthesis for where you're going to plug in your x value. Okay, and we'll come back and plug in that 2. And just solve for the y. It's basically, this is very simple because the y is already isolated. So we have 4 minus 6, or what? Negative 2. So we have to go back and plug in what we have found for y. And so we found a negative 2. So that's our ordered pair. This is 2, negative 2 would be a solution to this equation. Let's find this one, okay, right here in the second one, okay. We are looking for an x. We're given the y, and we have to find the x. So we're going to plug in the value negative 4 in for y, okay. And and we'll just need to isolate x. So this one has a little few more steps than the other, but um, it can be done. So let's add 6 to both sides, okay? You'll end up with 2 is equal to 2x 
divide by 2 on both sides, and you end up with x is equal to 1. So basically go back in and fill in your x and your point or your coordinates, or your pair of coordinates will be complete. So 1, negative 4 is a solution to this equation. All right, next we're going to complete the table of ordered pairs for this given equation. Okay, so we're given x minus y is equal to 1. Okay, and we have four ordered pairs, it looks like, that we're going to complete. So this is essentially the same type of, of exercise as the last one, as the last example. It, the coordinates are given to us in a table for us to complete. So for example, negative 2 is first for x. So we're given x is negative 2, so we'll plug that in and solve for the y. So let's get started. So here I've plugged in negative 2 for x, right? We have x minus y is equal to 1. So we have negative 2 minus y is equal to 1. Okay, so I'm going to isolate y. Add 2 to both sides, right? And you'll have, what, negative y is equal to 3. Now, this, I cannot leave that negative on the y. What I can do, though, is multiply both sides by a negative 1, or I can say this, I'm taking the opposite of both sides. And that kind of looks like this. Okay, I'm going to take the opposites. You can say negative 1, or just put a negative if you'd like. That works as well. Okay, and we'll put the equation in the parentheses there. So we'll have our original problem there. Okay, so I'm taking the opposite of both sides. It means I'll have a positive y and a negative 3. Okay, so for x equal to negative 2, then y is equal to negative 3. Okay, and note I have a little hint up there. It says reserve some space on your page for your scratch work. Okay, it's just a wise thing to do. So here now if y, if x, excuse me, is 0. And we're going to notice that when x or y are 0, this is going to be a special situation later on when we get into graphing, actually next. So um, hold on. We're going to come back and look at this particular equation. So I'm going to pause. Go ahead and pause your video and complete the table. Plug in whatever is given to you and find the other variable. You have three to do, right? You have one, two, three coordinates, three pairs of coordinates to go. All right, come back and see what you got. Okay. Okay, so here are the numbers. We got for zero, x equal to 0, we got negative 1. For x equal to 2, you should have y equal to 1. For y equal to 0, the last one there, we would get an x equal to 1. All right. We need to kind of keep in mind that even though it's in table form, these pairs represent ordered pairs, right? Solutions. And so I'm going to go ahead and write these down in my next example. So before we get to that exercise, we'll continue that in a minute. Let's talk about this rectangular coordinate system. It's also known as the Cartesian plane. Um, you may have heard of it. I'm hoping you guys have, have had this in your other classes previously. Um, and I know it's been a while, but this is something you should be able to either grasp easily or remember. Um, this is how we graph our solutions. Now, previously, we had a um, solution, a single solution, right? We solved for x, like here, okay? And we would plot the point, right, a single point on one single x-axis, correct? We'll call it the x-axis, or a number line, right? Okay, so this was one dimensional, right? Let's think of it that way. This single line, the single number line, right, is one dimensional, 1D. So now what's going to happen is we're going to have 2D. The rectangular coordinate system is based on an x axis here, 
that's left to right, kind of like our number line was, okay? It's really two number lines, okay? And we have an up and down one, a vertical, that's a Y axis. Okay, so we have a set of axes, one for each of our variables, one, or each of our solutions, right? The origin is, the, is actually the point with the coordinates zero, zero. So here, x is equal to zero and y is equal to zero. So the origin is not in any quadrant. I'm sure you're looking at the picture and you see these words quadrant. Let me show you how to plot a point, okay? To plot a point, the x coordinate will give us our left to right movement. We start here, we go left to right. We read the point from left to right, okay? Everything's pretty intuitive on that account. So x gives us our horizontal movement, right? Or left to right, side to side. Okay, and then the y gives us our vertical movement or our up and down movement, okay? So what we do, again, I'm gonna say this one more time. If you're plotting a point, okay? Let me label this too. Plotting points. If you're plotting points, you begin by reading the point, of course, like you would normally read, okay? You left to right, you start with X. And where, where do we begin? We begin at the origin, okay? So you put your pen in the center of the graph area, okay? And you go first from left to right, however X indicates, and then you go up and down. So, so let's put an X. Of course, we have our y-axis that's up and down. Let's label our origin. This is where we begin. When we go to plot a point, you will always begin at the origin. Okay. Each Cartesian plane, right, each set of x and y axes is separated into four different quadrants. A point will belong in each quadrant depending upon its signs on the coordinates, whether plus Two positives, negative, positive, positive, negative, negative, negative. Let's see if we can't figure that out, okay? So you can see how these points are going to fall with your sign rules, okay? So kind of just keep that in mind. Um, it's not the hugest subtopic, but it is something that's very good to know. All right, let's plot some points. Let's go back to that previous example, and we're going to just go ahead and plot the points that we found earlier. Okay. So I'm labeling my axes. I have x-axis, y-axis. Let's start with the first point, okay? We're going to start with negative two, negative three. And we're going to begin here at the origin. So one, two, okay? Stop there and then we go to the y coordinate. Y is negative three, which means I go down three. One, two, three. So left two means negative two, right? Negative two and then negative three for my Y movement, right? Okay, and so that's where you stop then, okay? So left two down three. This is where we stop and we will go ahead and draw our official point. I'll make that one bigger, a little bit bigger. And I'm gonna label it negative two, negative three. Um, so, okay. So moving right along to our next point, zero, negative one. Okay, so zero, negative one, we will go start at the origin, right? Put your pin on the middle, on the origin, very center of your graph. And we will go left to right, zero, right? So no movement for x, which keeps us right in the center. Now, negative one is the y, so we'll go down one. So we're actually here, okay? So this is the point zero, negative one, okay? Now the next point two, one, okay? Let's take a look. So start at the center, okay? Get a bright color, okay? Start at the center, two to the right, positive two, right? One, two then up one, positive one, right? One, two, and then right here, one. Okay, and let's label it two, one. 
and finally one zero. So we go one to the right and zero up and down, okay? So one to the right, zero up and down, which puts us right on the x-axis. Okay, and this is the point zero. Oh, excuse me, one, zero. Okay. So I want you to notice a couple of things. Let's notice the points that stayed on the axes, okay? So if there is a chord, anything with the coordinates that kind of go with what I'm about to write here, I'm going to the bottom left here. So it's just a couple of notice things that we want to just kind of get used to. A point that's on the located on the x-axis, one of its coordinates must be zero. Which one? Okay, so points that labeled with a zero for the y. So the x-axis, notice we had the point one zero. So we had left to right movement, right? So there was a number there for x, right? But not for y, okay? So there was no up and down movement, okay? So it's all left and right, no up and down for the x-axis. That's if the point is located on the x-axis. If it's located on the y-axis, you'll notice there's no left to right movement, no movement for the x-coordinate. So x is zero. Only y, it goes up and down, right? Along the y-axis, okay? So, which brings me to this little point, okay? The equations for the lines associated with each axis are these. Let me write this down. You will need to remember this, okay? So along these lines, okay, let me kind of give you guys this dealio here. The equation that represents the x-axis would be what would be y equal to zero. In other words, if you made like a little chart like before, x, y chart, y will always be zero. You could put anything in for x, okay, anything, 20, 13.5, whatever, but y coordinate will always be zero, which means it has left to right movement, but no up and down putting you anywhere along this axis, x-axis. Okay, so the equation can be just one of the variables and still be considered a linear equation in two variables because of the context. So if you see something like this, y equal to zero, and it says this is the equation, don't get confused about it. It's either talking about a horizontal or a vertical line. Okay, and for the y-axis, x is equal to zero is the equation, the actual equation. My xy chart, I'm just doing the chart because when I was in high school, that's how I used to remember and it always stuck with me. This is how I'd remember it. x equal to zero, so as x must be zero, I'd put a few points, a few zeros down for x and pick anything for y. Okay. Zero left to right, up and down. So you get points all down, up and down along the y-axis. So the equation is just, it has one variable equal to zero, and it's going to be the opposite variable from the one that it's the equation for. So for the y-axis, x equal to zero is its equation. For the x-axis, y equal to zero is its equation. Okay, let's get back to the points we just plotted, though. I want you to notice, or have you noticed that they are along a line? It looks like they are kind of just, like I could get a ruler out and fill a line in along these points. That is true. Your eyes are not fooling you. Here are the points. I'm kind of clearing this out for us. If you notice that, you're, you're doing great, okay? So here is the line associated with x minus y equal to 1. Remember that was our equation from earlier. So, okay, so it's not beautiful, but I drew a line through the points, and that's what you do. You really only need two points to, to graph the line, but for the sake of, of being careful and checking ourselves, making sure everything's correct, 
Normally, I'll ask you to do three, to plot three points and then draw your line. It helps you check and make sure you're all they're all lining up and not maybe going in other directions. So at the end of the line where there's one of the arrows, we would put the actual equation that we were graphing. So this line in particular represents x minus y equal to 1. Okay, so I would like for you to try this example. Now these are equations of lines, okay? y is equal to 6, x is equal to 4, y is equal to negative 5, and x is equal to 7. And just what we need you to know here is this. We have equations of vertical lines. When you have a vertical line up and down, right? And for future reference, um, actually this next lecture, you're going to find out that the slope of a vertical line is undefined. Undefined. Okay? Of course it would end up with a zero in the denominator, but we'll get to that. And then we'll find out that the horizontal line, see we have one pictured here on the right, the slope of this one, the slope is the slant, is zero. Okay? So the actual equation, okay, so here we are, the equation, this is not just a, a value of x, okay? So of a vertical line is going to be x equal to some real number. In this very small picture that I have here on, on next to the vertical line, x is at 1, 2, 3, right? Look, 1, 2, 3. This is actually the line, the graph is the graph of the line x equal to 3. So x equal to a real number, just and there's no y pictured in this equation. If it's just x equal to some number, it's going to be a straight up and down vertical line, even with wherever x is that number, okay? Now over here on the right, horizontal lines, remember now this is the equation, excuse me, it's the equation of a horizontal line. And so if you have y equal to some real number, again, right, there's no x in the picture, right? It's just y is equal to some number. This will be the equation of a horizontal line. And in my picture here, let's see, y is about at one and a half. So this is the, the graph of the line, of the horizontal line, one and a half, or 1.5. Okay? All right, so let's go take a look at this example here, okay? So now we know what to do. Remember that the uh, vertical lines would be what? X equal to something, right? And then the horizontal lines would be Y equal to something. So let's take a look. We wanna draw each line on the coordinate plane and label each line, okay? So let's go for it. So let's do first, let's do y equals 6. Now, mind you, I'm going to draw these freehand, so the lines may not be perfectly straight, but you'll get the picture. So here's our y-axis, right? Okay. The y-axis, and here's our x-axis. Let's first graph the line, draw the line y equal to 6. On our y-axis, where is y equal to 6? So we want to kind of get that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, okay? And for now, we're going to go ahead and just assume each mark, each line on our graph paper is one unit, unless otherwise noted. Okay? 4, 5, 6, okay? And so we know that the equation, if it's written as y equal to some real number, is going to be a horizontal line even with wherever that value is on that axis. So we make a horizontal line here, and this is y equal to six. Okay, let's do x equal to four. Okay, so going the other way, on the x-axis, let's find where's four, okay? So here we'll have one, two, three, four, right? And so we know we have a vertical line, even with where x is four. Okay, and here we go, and close enough. 
All right, and so this is the graph of the line x equal to 4. Okie doke. And so um, go ahead and I'll pause the video, and when you start it again, you'll see that y is equal to negative 5, and x is equal to 7 has been done. And we're going to go to part B. Okay? Go for it. Okay, so here I have my four lines drawn. Okay, notice that y is equal to negative 5 is down here. Okay, see that right down here. Okay, and x is equal to 7 is to the right of the other vertical line we drew. Okay. Okay. There. So those are the two you should have done just now. Okay portion of the four lines form a rectangle and so let's kind of highlight that rectangle okay and here we go here it is highlighting it in a bright yellow all right so there's the rectangle let's see let's do it like this okay here's my rectangle that the four lines inter they intersect and create this rectangle here and we are to find the area of the rectangle. And so considering that we just said that each line on each uh, line on our grid is one unit, we can just count the sides. We need to find what? Length and width. Remember that area is equal to length times width of a rectangle anyway. So our rectangle's width is three units wide, right? And the length here is what? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 units. So our length times our width, right, would be 3 times 11, or 11 times 3, or what? 33 square units. Okay. All right, in this one, we are to determine whether or not the given point lies on the graph of this equation. The beauty of this is we don't even need to graph it. So remember some of these, if you're determining the point is on this graph, you know, kind of just stop for a sec. No need to graph, okay? All you need are your algebra skills. So what we're going to do is, like before, we're going to plug in x is equal to 6 and y is equal to negative 6. So where y is, we'll put the negative 6. And where x is, we'll put the positive 6. And we'll see if we get a true statement. Okay, so x is positive 6. There we go. Now, let's go ahead and simplify the right side and just every time... You do a step of that, you bring down the left side with you, okay? The first step would be to cancel. 3 goes into 6 twice. And now you have negative 5 times 2. Negative 10 plus 4. Bring down that left side each time. Now, negative 10 plus 4 is negative 6. True statement, okay? So this is true, meaning that this is a point on the graph of the equation negative 5 thirds x plus 4. Okay, so 6, negative 6 does lie on the graph. Okay. Also, we say if it's a point on the graph of this equation, it is a solution to this equation. Okay. So that's the same thing. A point on the graph of an equation is a solution to an equation. Now, what does this make us realize? This makes us realize a couple things. Okay, that fact in itself and the fact that we could have infinitely many points, right? As many real numbers as there are, there's how many points I could come up with if I had time to do the math, but I don't. So let's do the next example. All right, in the next one, if x is uh, a member of this set, okay, x can be negative 6, negative 3, 0, or 9. And we're going to find the set of points defined by this 
equation, 2 thirds x minus 4, y equal to a thirds x minus 4. One way to accomplish this would be to make an xy chart, okay? And this is going to be something you'll, you'll hear, you call, call, it'll be called a few different things, but mainly I like to call it an xy chart. You've seen one earlier in this broadcast, so we do x column, y column. The y is defined by the equation because y is equal to 2 thirds x minus 4, right? So they have defined our x as 4 as many times when you get uh, more practice at graphing, you will choose the x values. So these guys go in your x column. Okay, so we have negative 6, negative 3, 0, and 9. And merely plug and chug. You're going to plug in your x, negative 6 to begin with, get your y based on the equation. Okay, remember the equation defines the relationship between x and y. Okay, so first for x equal to negative 6, just go ahead and be neat about the scratch work. Leave room for scratch work. 2 thirds. Oh, I forgot my y is equal to. Hold on. This is a good point for me to, like, good, uh, I guess, point in the presentation to help you realize that I am plugging in a negative value. And look what I did. I just kind of made a template of my equation with an open set of parentheses. Okay. I'm about to plug in a negative value. So this is how you want to do that. Open parentheses first and come back and put in... The, the values you're plugging in. It's a good habit to get into. Okay, so let's go ahead and simplify. 3 goes in itself into negative 6. And see a negative 6, negative 2, right? So we are left with what? Negative 2 times, po excuse me, positive 2 times negative 2, negative 4, minus 4. And so y is going to be what? Negative 8. Okay, all right. So what about x is equal to negative 3? I'll do this one, and then you guys can do 0 and 9 on your own. So if x is negative 3, let's open a template. We're just going to rewrite the equation above, right? This guy with a set of open parentheses first. Keep it generic, and then come back and plug a value in. That way you know you got your equation written correctly. Now let's plug in negative 3. Notice your 3's are going to cancel and you're going to end up with 2 times negative 1. Negative 2 minus 4. Or negative 6. So we got negative 6 next. Alright, so you guys go ahead and get the values for 0 and 9. Very similarly, and just be neat about it. You know, be careful. Work carefully. You get the next two values. And uh, pause your video right now. Okay, if you got negative 4 for 0, so the point 0, negative 4, and then a 2 for the x equal to 9, so 9, 2 would be that point. You're correct. Let's plot these and see what happens now. Okay. Okay, again we're seeing that an equation that has the degree, the highest degree on either side of this equation, the highest degree on any exponent is 1 right? Makes it a linear equation. That's how you can identify them. Okay, look at the x and the y. Okay, let me rewrite this down here with this. 2 thirds x minus 4. There's no squares, no cubes on the x or the y's, right? It's only x to the first power and it's y to the first power. That's what makes them linear and actually that's what makes us, makes them tend to be in a straight line. Okay, so here is the line that represents this equation. y is equal to 2 thirds x minus 4. Very good. So let's move on. Let's go on to some more linear equation skills. The last thing we're going to look at in this particular video is the x and y intercept. Okay, the x-intercept would be where the line, okay, I'm looking at this picture here. The x-intercept is where the line crosses the x-axis, okay? 
And of course, the y-intercept is the point where the line crosses the y-axis. And I want you to notice this, a couple of things. Okay, for the y-intercept, well, let me start with the x-intercept. If you look in the little box where I have the highlighted area, to find the x-intercept, you let y equal 0, okay, of course, and then you'll solve for the other variable, the unknown would be x. Once you get that, then your point that you're going to plot for that, since you've let y equal 0, the y coordinate will be 0. And of course, whatever you get for x, right? So you're letting y equal 0. To get the y-intercept, you're going to let x equal 0 and solve for y, of course. Then when you go to plot your point, your x-coordinate then will be 0, okay? and then whatever y is equal to. So note, like the point in the in the picture back to the right, this particular line crossed the x-intercept at 5, 0. Okay? Note that anytime a point lies on the x-axis, it's going to have a y-coordinate of 0, right? It doesn't go up and down. There's no movement of up and down. So that makes that y-coordinate 0. And anytime a point lies on the y the y-axis is in the y-intercept. Notice there's no left to right movement. There's only up and down. So that makes that x-coordinate 0. So anyway, just something to keep in mind. Okay, whatever you've let equal 0, that coordinate's got to be 0. Okay, so um, we can use these points that we can be easy to find. We can use these to plot the points from the line and then of course there are two of them so we can draw a straight line. Okay, you know, of course, we would want to check the line by plotting that third point, and I'll show you what to do for that. But let's go ahead and try this, okay? I got a couple examples up on the board. Let's check it out. I'm going to use the x and y intercepts to draw the graphs of the lines, okay? Okay, so to help with this, what I'm going to do is bring down that the note, okay? Yeah. Okay. So, let's find the uh, x-intercept first, okay? For 3x minus 2y is equal to 12. So we'll make a little note and put x-intercept is what we're looking for. So we're going to let y equal to 0. Okay? And so knowing that, we're going to go ahead and plug that in. It will have 3x. Notice we're not plugging anything in for x. We're solving for x. So we're plugging a, a 0 in for y. And we'll solve for x. Okay, which, what happens? 0 times this just cancels this whole term out. The y term goes away. And we end up with 3x is equal to 12. Or what? x is equal to 4. Okay, so all this gets me the point. Remember, y was 0 x is 4, so that's the point 4, 0. Okay, so let's kind of plot that. 1, 2, 3, I'm to the right on the graph, 4 here, 4, 0. So here is that point, 4, 0. Let's find our y-intercept, okay? Now we'll find the y-intercept by letting x equal 0. So you see you're letting the opposite variable equal 0 to find the intercept. Okay, so x will now be 0, and we'll solve for y. Okay, so here we are, 3, open a parenthesis, minus 2y, equal to 12. And instead of x, we want a 0. This whole term will cancel out. And we have negative 2y is equal to 12, or what? y is going to be negative 6. Watch your signs. Okay, all this gets me what point? 0 for x negative 6 for y. So let's go back to the graph. 0 left to right, down 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, so we're right here for our y-intercept. 0, negative 6. Okay, so next we want to fill in our line. Okay, so you can see here that I've filled in my line and I have my y-intercept, my x-intercept, and what I did here, over here on the right, is I 
got a third point. I chose x equal to 1. I let x equal 1. See that I plugged a 1 in for x. And I solved for y. And that gave me a third point. I was able to plot it. It did fall on my line. And what that does, guys, is that verifies for you that you're on the right track. So don't be lazy about that. Go for it. You know, you find that choose choose are really simple, easy to quick to compute x value to plug in and solve for y. And again, it verifies for you that your line you're on the right track. It should line up. Okay. What I want you guys now to do is I would like for you to try b. Notice that it's y equal to negative 5x plus 5. Okay. And so you guys try this one and um, pause the video and when you come back we'll have it all done and you can kind of check your work against this one, the solution I'll have up here and we'll talk about it. Hopefully you'll be on the right track too. Okay, pause your video now. Okay, see you in a sec. Okay, so here we are and I have gotten found my x-intercept. I let y equal zero. And I solved for x, which was 1. That gives me the point 1, 0. So here it is plotted to the right there. Uh, to find my y-intercept, I allowed x to equal 0, plugged it in, and solved for y, and got 5. So that gave me the point 0, 5. I went ahead and plotted that point up there on the graph and filled in my line. Okay. And... Um, then, after that, I went ahead and allowed x to equal 0 here, down below all the other scratch work. Okay, and solved for y and got negative 5. That gave me the point 2, negative 5, which did plot right onto the line, just right. And so, this is the graph of the line associated with the equation y is equal to negative 5x plus 5. Okay, now you'll notice that some of these lines, if you look at them and, you know, from left to right, okay, some of them have different slants. This is coming up shortly in, in lecture seven. Uh, we're going to talk about what's called the slope. And um, you'll notice that if from left to right, they are moving uphill, that's going to be a positive slope. Okay, um, you'll notice some of them from left to right are going downhill. If that's the case, that's a negative slope. Earlier in this video, we talked about a vertical line, right? Vertical, having an undefined slope. Okay, and we talked about a horizontal line having a zero slope. Okay. Anyway, these are scenarios we're going to talk about in this next lecture seven. So that's coming up a little bit of a little preview of things to come. Okay, you guys have a great day and let me know if you have any questions. I'll be in the office.